It's a trap.
And here we go indeed. Good afternoon, everyone. I've been fine and welcome to the shop today. Um, so today, as kind of the title hints, we're working on some industrial terrain uh, that I've been building up for the last, I've been working on the last month, couple weeks, whatever. It's been busy. It's been very busy lately. But anyways, um, so steps that I've already done on this is obviously the assembly, the um, priming, the kind of the over prime, as well as uh, I've applied the liquid latex, uh, the masking, the masking latex. It's already been applied to this, and then I, yesterday I applied uh, this layer of gray, like gray black paint, to this. Now. I am extremely grateful I decided not to stream yesterday and try to stream progress on this because I was using the airbrush and the airbrush was being exceptionally finicky with me. Um, perhaps because of the paint I was using because I hadn't cleaned it properly. I don't know all the exact details of it, but it was one of those where I was extraordinarily frustrated. It was, and it would have made it, been, it may have been, um, unfortunate viewing for everyone so rather than put anybody through that i'm glad that you know it's as it is so um i did try to make the best i can work with everything i've got so there's that um so currently what i'm going to be doing is i wanted to at this stage i'm for the most part like there's a lot of this that is done, so working on this may not necessarily take the longest. What I will be doing afterwards, though, is I do have another piece of terrain to work on. Uh, more industrial terrain, so you guys won't be missing anything in that regard. It won't be like I'm going to change anything. Um, and in that sense, it'll be easy enough to kind of like transition from one to the other. And then we go from there. Um, I will have to do. There is going to be like okay. Uh, I did misspoke a little bit, misspeak a little bit, where I said like oh, well, I'm forgetting the detailing of like all the grime and oil and everything of this. And in fact, that's going to take a little bit to a apply. B um, mic is low. That's very unfortunate. It's, it's just about as high as it can go now. On the on that, so I don't know whether it's my volume, my personal volume is I'm not projecting well enough, or what, or if there's just something wrong with the sound, the mixer on uh, the computer. Um, actually, you know what? I have a theory. I have an idea. One moment. All right, how does that sound now? Let me, please let me know if I'm being too loud now. Much better? Okay. Because what happened was, I believe, the mic aux, like the, for whatever reason, it was, it had not detected the microphone, and so it was using the computer's microphone not the external one so i was like let me check this out because it didn't detect the camera at first either so i had to basically kind of like go no 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 use this so i wonder if i'll have to do like a double check uh every time especially if anybody says like hey they're having audio issues like hearing me clearly because I wonder if that's what's been going on, is that it's, uh, the audio isn't so much that something wrong with the Twitch app, it's something more along the lines of the 
computer is picking up is picking up everything and not the uh, the onboard microphone and not the actual microphone, not the uh, not the microphone that I've dedicated to this. Well, let me turn this down too. That'll probably help out. Better normalize, equalize uh, the volume and everything. So I definitely have, uh, I mean, I still have to test out on the other terrain, like test out, I mean, uh, work the other terrain to know for certain, but something I am discovering of importance is that uh, oh excellent lurk away lurk away no worries thank you for the input feedback on the audio but yeah so when I did the grime effect so you can see like where it's kind of like that, some of that soot and that rough texture uh, this is all tile grout that I applied here however the thing is though a it got everywhere that's a pain in the butt onto its own but B um, when I was working on the Chemical Depot, which is the other one I got off to the side that I'll be working on today, potentially, most likely. Um, but yeah, so when I was working on that one, I was noticing that there were patches of it coming up. Vaith! Hey, thank you for the resubbing. How are you doing? How's it going? Welcome into the mech shop. I would presume you don't. I don't need. You don't need any particular in, uh, introduction for me. But in case anyone wants to hear it, I am happy to oblige. All you have to do to really get my attention in that regards, or even just get my attention whenever saying anything, is just put in the command "witness," and I will do my best to focus my attention. Like so. Excellent. What's up? Or are you just testing it out? Testing? No worries. Yeah, it's one of three uh, commands that I have set up that actually have a visual cue. Uh, so there's witness, there's rim shot, which is meant for, obviously, whenever anybody makes a really bad joke uh, and they want that. And then there is like that. And then there is the Pope. That is not like strictly reserved for, uh, it's set up. <laughs> Glad you're having fun with that. Uh, but yeah, the Pope, it's because there is actually a streamer called It's the Pope. It's actually spelled uh, uh, T-E-H in there. He is also a miniature painter. He's a great guy fun having around with and whenever you pop up it's always it's the pope so i decided let me make a little command for whenever he pops in um i know he's been very 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 busy lately uh lot of stuff going on so i don't know entirely what the situation is but it's still there for him and you know whatnot so i'm thinking let's do a bit of cleverness here Let's kind of give the hint these are more pipes over here that kind of terminate in different manners. But yeah. There you go. Thank you. He does deserve a shout out. He's a great guy. And then here we go, trying to let's get this situated. Because I don't remember what all these pieces were. Not all of them, like this one in particular. I don't remember where it was from. But I was like, all right, let me get that one situated. Even a little spillover is not going to be bad because, A, that's how it could end up looking in real, like how it could end up because it's just like, eh, whatever, it's painted, isn't it? 
um, but also um, yeah Sorry, I got a little distracted because I also got in my own head for a moment. Uh, specifically, um, so when I'm painting and I'm not on stream, I tend to listen to Pandora. In fact, actually, early on in the channel, I used to listen to Pandora, uh, but the problem is, is, is my my audio would always get mu muted, and I was like, "Oh, that's not good," and it was because of that. It was because I was using Pandora. So rather than dealing with that. What I ultimately did was I switched over. I found a artist, um, uh, the note right there actually from Nightbot. Thank you, Nightbot, for the timing. Uh, now they're referred to as Ravitskjord, or however it's really pronounced. My Nordic is probably very, very bloody terrible. Mostly because I'm not truly Nordic. Uh, <laughs> anyways. Um, but yeah, they said, oh yeah, yeah, go right ahead, use our music's not a problem, you know, I believe they've set up to be royalty free, um, so it's one of those that you'll have to, I would double check with them anyways, be like, hey, you are, you, you're according to your, uh, YouTube, it says you're royalty free, so, yeah, um, Beyond that, um, so I'm listening to Pandora. I have a metal station I like listening to. Um, mostly inspired from my uh, favorite songs of Sabaton, a uh, Swedish metal band who tend to sing about uh, military history and whatnot. Real military history. They nobody. They have. They're like no. We will never sing about. We are not going to sing about like Star Trek battles or Star Wars battles or anything like that. Even though people have actually wrote into them, be like, come on, it'd be awesome. And they're like no. Anyways. Uh So where this comes up is a friend of mine was talking was talking on Facebook about how they uh, really would like to go to Tokyo sometime because there's like a uh, Toy Story hotel or something like that. It sounds pretty awesome. But as soon as they said like I'd spent I'd love to spend a night in Tokyo, there's a song by a metal group called uh, Beast in Black. Or is it, no, it's Battle Beast. Maybe it is Beast in Black. Either way. Um, I know Beast in Black is one of their... I think it's Battle Beast. But anyways. And one of their songs is... Uh, one Night in Tokyo. So when I saw them do that, I was like, let me go... Let me do a Google search for... Let me... Not a YouTube search for that song so I can link it in their video... In their... In their chat... In the discussion. And I found their official music video for it. And it's like this anime-inspired piece... That's really cool. Um, and kind of took some very weird turns, and I love it for it. You know, it's so utterly ridiculous. It's really amazing. So, I'm glad I found it. I'm glad that they indirectly encouraged me to find it and to uh, dink around with it. So, uh, okay, so with this. I am just doing a little overbrush on this little console thingy. Don't see any other spots. Eh, no, no, here. I'm mistaken. That one. And then trying to decide how much of this uh, water gun. That's what it was, actually, back in the, uh, before I used it. Uh, not a true, not a true like uh, person size water gun. Instead, it was a uh, water gun for like a toy. I think it was a Batman toy specifically. 
so Because every bit of industrial terrain needs some caution stripes. I'm going to start with the yellow base and then cover, it, cover up the stripe and make the black stripes. But yeah, the anime music video for One Night in Tokyo is just hilariously awesome. It's like, I think my my favorite part about it is the fact that there's a brief, okay, so the story in the video is like, there's some guy just chilling at home and he's looking and he sees like an ad for like, do you want to spend one night in Tokyo? And so the whole video is his imagination of... Uh, what's the the vi what's go what could happen in Tokyo and it's just so bloody ridiculous because like he goes to a club where there's like anthropomorphic animal people hanging like chilling and partying he kind of like falls for one of the dancers she falls for him robot police raid the place and it's like what the heck is going on <laughs> you know. They're fleeing. She has a bazooka on her motorcycle for some reason, which she can summon with a whistle, like whistling at it. Like I said, it's just the most ridiculous thing ever. It's hilarious. And then it ends with him like, like, do I really want to do this? And he hovers over the no for a moment. I'm like, that would be awesome if he actually clicked no. He clicks yes, of course he does. But come on, you'd have to have some awesome cojones to like make this awesome video with this ridiculous narrative and then turn around and go like yeah no that's not for me <laughs> i'm done especially since it could be extra hilarious the fact that like nothing tokyo would be nothing like what his imagination is going wild with uh so these i figure are more they're less uh pipes and more like cables of some sort, or like, tu or like, they're not necessarily metal tubing, necessarily. So, hence why I kind of figured, okay, let me put some metal clamps on, like, this part in particular. Maybe not, uh, clamp clamps may not be the braces, braces might be the better way of phrasing it. Kind of secure it to the frame here. And I get real quiet just because I start focusing on, like, the part I'm at right now. So I apologize on that one. Um, so I never did, get a I never did uh, because I didn't stream yesterday. Um, I didn't get a chance to expound on how my Star Wars game went on Wednesday. Um... For those of you who weren't there and don't know about it, uh, so anybody watching the VOD or anybody lurking who's not showing up in my uh, analytics at the moment, that's okay. Um, it went just absolutely splendid. It was amazing, hilariously fun. I mean, okay, granted the GM was like, let me let me put some mercy on you guys because this is a boss fight and I don't want to... Uh, I mean, I hope I didn't come across like I was complaining or moping or upset about anything, but... Like, early on in the fight, my character got gunned down. Didn't die. No, no, not didn't die. Just was taken out of the fight and would have stayed out of the fight for, like, at least a couple rounds if it weren't for the GM going, yeah, let me let me do this. Let me bring you... Let me make it so it's not so boring. 
once you get taken out in a boss fight. And to which I was grateful. It was it was like, okay, let's do this, make it work. Um Yeah, we definitely got Yeah, exactly. It was what I love about it too was the effort he put into of diversifying the fight. Um so some context. We were taking on Supreme Mogul Karaga the Unyielding, who is a hut in charge of the hut cartels in the Old Republic. And so, uh, basically we were chasing him down because he decided, hey, let's feed you to a Rancor. It's my pet Rancor, which we kicked its butt pretty, pretty soundedly. Um... And what ended up happening was, is so, we beasted on it, we were giving chase, we took out a couple more of his hired uh, guns, uh, slash, I think, like, in hindsight, like, his indentured servants, slash, just straight up slaves, because, jerk. And... Uh, then he comes at us in a giant mech suit. Uh, to which we were not really fully prepared for in taking on a vehicle. Nowhere near fully prepared to do that. And this is a walker, basically, so it was using vehicle, vehicular stats. So that was challenging. But the GM was, but the GM was like, okay, well, here is the layout, and we're figuring things out, like, okay, he's getting a shield generator, he's getting things uh, powered by something, and there's, like, mechanisms. Had we just gone headlong and not, like, looked at anything or tried figuring anything out, we could have been screwed. Um, I mean, heck, our Jedi in the party has a weapon that is suited for taking on vehicles and, like, getting through, like, heavy-duty doors and everything, like, structures, and they were having a tough time getting through, so I was like, mm -hmm. but we managed it, we managed to take him out, um, uh, our hut-hating uh, Wookiee who essentially is transitioning to being human. Uh, he's our shaved Wookiee. Uh, he definitely went whole hog taking out the, the hut as well as kind of like went a little crazy with, like, I'm going to, like, you know, bathe in his blood. That was not literally what he did. But he might as well have. Alright. So I was thinking about I wanted to have some variety in that, but I kind of like it as kind of the... Just, here's the one color. I can put that away, not worry about it. But yeah, there was, like, a uh, computer console that was, like, regulating... Uh, how his armor was, like, working and affecting on the suit. There was a... Um, where are we going yet? There was a power generator that was helping to kind of, like, power a lot of things, including, like, the factory that he was kind of emerging from. <coughs> this is where things get a little tricky. It's not just a matter of getting the right thickness. It's also now a matter of getting it to spiral around everything at the correct angles.
Alright, so that wasn't as hard as I was fearing it could have been. But I do need to do a little cleanup around with the yellow. But yeah, so there was the power generator, the computer console, and there was also a pylon that was useful for something. I don't know exactly what it was for, but there was a lot of different ways like how to approach the combat and do all kinds of crazy stuff. Um, I was trying to decide what are the right letters to go with this, and I think just to maximize some of the idea and design. I think I'm going with, um, oops. U6 for like unit number six or incinerator unit number six. Cause I actually envision this is, this is an incinerator unit of some sort. I got the bigger stencil out because I was like, oh, I got more room I can work with. I'm also going to probably put some more on the other side, but I'm gonna, I got a smaller stencil for that purpose. And because it's perfectly symmetrical, I'm actually going to flip it so that way I can get this lined up the right way and maximize the space. So you guys have an idea of what I'm working on. What are you guys working on? Any projects that you guys are working on of note, of interest? Doesn't have to be, it ha all it has to be is interesting to you. That's all that matters. So, if you're part of my Discord, which I will shamelessly plug as soon as I'm set with this part. Mm, that could have been a lot neater. There's already a, a uh, I don't have to, I don't have to put in a command. It already popped up with one. All right, hopefully this one will be better executed. Yeah, Nightbot heard me. Thank you, Nightbot. I do appreciate it. All right, so there's that one. And I got space over here. So I'm going to go to a smaller stencil and use the same letterings. That is U6, again for incinerator unit 6.
This one's slightly off, but that's okay. So there's that set. Let's put that one right there. Let me get to cleaning up the caution stripes. This is the uh, hazard striping. And then we can start doing the uh, chipping. Let's see how it looks out. Alright, uh, close enough for me, because <laughs> some of it kind of like, yeah, veers off in a weird direction. So, if I need to, I'll just sort of paint over it a little bit with some different stuff. Okay. Let's start over here. Let's see what kind of reveals itself. Some of this is like not like thoroughly reinforced, so I'm like trying to be like I'm being a little trying to be a little gentle with it to a degree. And I'm like, oh no. But I think this is also one of the first pieces in which I used No, I used it on the um thermal reactors, I think. Or I switched over to a new chipping medium. Or uh, not chipping medium itself, because that's actually a different product onto its own. This is, instead, this is rather um, uh, liquid latex. So. Or liquid ma masking latex. The idea meaning is that you can apply this to, uh, it's typically used in watercoloring. So you block out, like, you, you paint where you want to, and then you use this to block out sections that you don't want later colors to get mixed up with. So that way, you can be like, okay, I'm going to paint, 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 and then you can go, okay, now let me peel up the latex. Again, definitely the challenge I'm presented myself with is I didn't really reinforce everything super hard and now of course there's multiple layers of paint to get through which does help create like interesting spattered rust effects so upshot But of course, the other challenge is now that I'm going to be like focusing on trying to get this peeling up, and I'm not necessarily saying a whole lot at the moment. So, but hopefully, like, kind of seeing this is just like impressive or good viewing in general. So, no real damage done, other than just quiet listening to the uh, background music.
And like I did with the thermal reactors, I chose the color that I did for its potential accurate look. It's striking its own its own uh, visual interest, but also so that way, after I get through doing this, you can actually see where the rust effects are without too much issue. And that's because I've discovered that like I would paint like a few sections and different things in red, and it's not really the greatest one to go with that. It might make sense and it might look good, but it's hard to see where the grime is unless you're looking very carefully, in my opinion, at least. Let's see here. Potentially use a brush to kind of scrub up different areas. There we go. Because I can't quite get my finger in certain spots. I have a vague idea of where I put um, the latex because of the fact that I, could, I was aiming for like, oh, here's some grime, here's some soot. Let me put that around that so that way it looks like the rust, the corrosion and rust and everything. And so when it came to peeling it up, you'd have like this rusty and grimy looking texture. So, trying to like hit on multiple angles of that. Whoopo. I forgot to uh, paint this part. All right, that's caught up. So yeah, like right up here, there's some of that corrosion, that, some of that grime. So I was like, oh, it's probably up here, some more up here. Oh, glorious big spot. In my opinion, this technique is much trickier to do on most models, most uh, miniatures, and that's because, uh, let's be honest, uh, you're going to have to scrub and tear away at a model, and you may not necessarily have, they may not be, no matter how much glue you put on, they're not necessarily going to be able to withstand that kind of punishment. So it's best reserved for terrain or like each like larger than average models and like in spaces where you can do this kind of scrubbing this kind of uh physical work on them and i knocked over one of my paints so i'm not gonna put i'm gonna put that right back over along that's that one Okay, 
Dead spot. Perfect. I love it. Uh, specifically, I love it when, like, I forget where. I don't like forgetting where I put, like, different effects and everything, but I love it when I can be like, okay, let me get here and where I put, like, the lettering and everything, I can get, like, some of that peeling and everything because some of that chipping. There's just something satisfying about, like, the. It really sells the look better, in my opinion. Of like disuse and the casual disuse and like disrepair and everything. Again, I apologize for where I get really quiet. It is. Oh, lurk away, no worries. But yeah, with the set with like all the descrubbing and the chip reveal and everything. Because I don't think there's not a lot more surfaces. There's like all this on top. And there's the central unit right here, the central portion right here. On both sides. Because as much as it makes sense to try and get, like, a lot more on the interior over there, that's what just the casual painting is going to be more about. Because, let's be honest, how was I going to get in there carefully enough without, like, ruining everything? I'm just glad I haven't damaged or destroyed anything as is.
I should check back one second. Four months, all right, okay. I think you gifted a couple subs, so there, I'll have to bear that in mind. Sorry, I was murmuring a lot to myself about, like, okay, because I was like, all oh, right, you know, I should be working on also um, subscriber models, which I, will, I intend to do. I will be, po I should be posting up some pictures of them as is, or primed at least. And then go, okay, everyone, what would you guys like for the theme and color and everything? Or the paint scheme in general. I'll do my best to accommodate. Oop. And then get that delivered as soon as I can, as soon as I'm able. I feel like that's, you know, I can check this pipe some more, see if there's any other, here we go. Oh, that's not latex. That's the paint. Uh, mental note. Some of these toy pipes will have to get um, some serious, like, sanding in order for the paint and everything to do that. Oh, my phone is yelling me to update. Remind me later. Thank you, phone, for interrupting my stream. That's okay. Not upset, not worried about it. I might be, you know, not necessarily doing as long a stream as originally hinted at or whatnot. Alright, so as as previous, I'm be mixing up some grime effects. Start with like get some mixing medium, get some yellow, some flush wash for additional body. Uh, the mixing medium is both for body, for volume, as well as. giving it a little better grip. All right. Mix that all up. Yeah, nice, gross, and grimy kind of brown. Lightish brown with it, like that touch of yellow. Because I also used a little brown ink in there.
and I'm not just applying to where the rust is specifically. I'm going to be applying in a few other spots to help sell the kind of the grime and corrosion. And again, that kind of neglect and misuse. Try not to just like go everywhere with it and go too overboard. I think it's just enough. Just enough to do some nice visual interest dynamic look. And if it starts to pool around a little bit in different areas, that's okay. Grime should kind of... Grime of like this magnitude and this design should definitely have kind of like seeped and spill over everywhere. Definitely some areas where I'm like, okay, definitely have this kind of bordered by grime and grossness. Other spots, less so. Eep. I'm not going to overpaint and blues. But no damage done. like that bit of momentary like oopsie doopsie All right. the basement uh, on a different note basement is definitely getting some still work and whatnot it's got to get to doing more work on it and everything. All right, so while the rust definitely stands out, the grime is battling this a little bit. I think that's actually good in this case. See, again, I visualize this as kind of like a incinerator unit of some sort, where like you kind of throw stuff in and it kind of like you know gets burned up. It's the garbage disposal, as it were, except industrial strength and, you know, redonkulous and powered magnitude. So, the
idea being that it's like, okay, well, um, you know, basically it should be very soot and grime covered because of like what it's been doing. So as a result, the more, the fact that like a lot of the grime is blending in against its paint helps. That's Bluey! How's it going? Thank you for joining. Thank you for the resubscription, for the re upping. How have you been? And of course, welcome back into the shop. Do, 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 do. Yeah. Definitely add some gross there. Do, do, do. And I get real quiet again because I'm just like concentrating where I'm at. Uh, but not necessarily like, I don't need to be concentrating that hard in this case. So. I am just kind of like the getting into the oh this is this is going on right here so adding a lot of those streaks to the grime as it's kind of like showing where it's kind of dripping and pooling and whatnot. Rotate. And with that bright lettering and all this grime coming down, it helps add a, like a wonderful contrast to everything. Definitely the challenges with the tile grown I've discovered is it can sort of pop up, pop up and out for some reason. And I don't know why. Uh, call it inexperience with working with it. For a reason, it's like 
you know, there's it's glued down, there's Mod Podge, there's primer, there's another layer of primer, and yet, here it is, popping up willy-nilly. Granted, I might be able to make uh, capitalize on its uh, sudden appearance. But still, it's like, what hell? Alright, that's a lot of good grime in my opinion. So, let's carefully kind of shift this over and around. I'm going to put the uh, brown ink away for the moment. Actually, I'll keep it out because I'm going to be probably using it later. Maybe not later on stream, because it was definitely taking me longer working on this than I thought. And I didn't necessarily have long... I didn't have intentions for going particularly long today. So, instead... Alright, let me do that. Let's add some body with more flush wash. I'm going to need it. And then just a little bit more mixing medium for the same purposes. Mixing up in a couple different little palette pots so we kind of have room and then kind of add specific grime and gross. Again, on to the grime and gross. Not necessarily going in the same order that I did before, and that's okay. As long as it gets the right look across in the end, that's all that matters. As long as I go in kind of some kind of pattern and order, so that way I'm not like doing extra work needlessly, everything will be fine.
Gut. I'm just glad, I'm really grateful that a lot of this is reading very well, in my opinion, as, like, corrosion, rust, and grime, and what have you. Looks like it's most of everything on this part for the stage. So, next up, very easy. Do not drink water. Because, again, this is really bad for you. So, that one there. Close up. Mix what I got. Start applying. Now the real, like, oil and grind comes out. from the horrible smell because <laughs> it does not smell pleasant. And I've got a spot set up off to the side for it to start drying, then which I'm not going to be worried about whatever else underneath. Because I got paper towel set up, I've got a uh, bit of cardboard as well.
Let's get my face like right into the stuff that smells bad. Again, getting really quiet because concentrating on the where things are. Again, I'm really glad that this is still reading, again, to me at least, as uh, grime and gross. Is that the intention? Is it is grime, oil, and gross. Like, being near, you're like, yeah, I want to get that a shot. Alrighty then, so we got, oh, you know what, I'm just going to use a little more attention up here, just a little bit, you know, draw attention to the fact that I accidentally left the name brand product up on the name on here, but you know what, that'll be like a little Easter egg for somebody like, what the heck is that, They're like, oh, yeah, haven't you heard of Trend Net Manufacturing? That's not, the, the, the real, it's just Trend Net. Okay, um, I think the only thing I gotta do next, maybe, is, no, I can actually probably leave those as is. Because again, the underside of these pipes didn't get quite the uh, proper blasting of primer, and or the primer didn't adhere to it as well as it should have, because it was, again, it's very smooth plastic. Um, so as a result, um, it didn't, stick that well. Alright. A little rag to get sop up and clean up. Alright. <sighs> Thank you very much for everyone for your patience and that we got. 
Thank you for joining me today. Let me get us lined up and ready for a great target. Because again, I'm not quite feeling like continuing on where I'm at at the moment. So, let me do a little search and search. Uh, might be a moment. I don't see a lot. I mean, I got a number of people, so just better like, narrowing it down and figuring out. Okay, is it this person? Is this person? Is it this person? And of course, if you guys have any of your own suggestions, please go right ahead and go like, "Hey, check out this guy." To which I'll be like, "Okay, let's take a look." Well, I gotta take a look at this, see what they're doing. So it's not quite miniature stuff. Oh, you're welcome. Uh, but let's get those credits rolling, because I almost forgot. Yeah, let's get this raid started, but I found somebody. Might be interesting enough to do this for a raid. Right. Again, everyone, thank you so very much for joining me today. Thank you very much uh, for your patience, your indulgence, your subscriptions, your following, following, even your lurking. Thank you very much. And remember, everyone, take care of yourselves, take care of one another. We're all in this together. And be seeing you out there. Bye for now.